Yo, what's good, Crucial Partner? Just Mike. And as you guys can see, we finally finished feeding our beast, and now we have ourselves a 98 overall landing collar and most feared beast of the gridiron edition. All right, now he's only going to be a rage over the weekend, but he's going to come with big hitter Kim. Most Fear Kim and also Enraged Kim, which is really, really nice. Now, looking at his stats, man, his stats are really ne next level. I mean, you talk about the 94 speed, the 91 play rec, 90 zone coverage, 90 pursuit, 98 hit power, and 96 acceleration, along with the 95 tackle, man. Um, you know, Landy Collin kind of patterns himself after Sean Taylor. That's why he wears number 21. And looking at his stats, man, he's kind of got Sean Taylor-like numbers, man. That's a pretty dope thing. Now, a lot of people ask me, yo, Mike, how do you get this card? How do you finish the solos, man? I'm having so much trouble. I can't beat them. I've been stuck for hours. Well, to be honest with you, the thing that I'm going to tell you is, is that's part of the process. All right? It's totally random whether you win or lose. You just got to get the breaks that's going to go your way. But you're going to have to be able to capitalize on them when you get them. All right. That's the biggest thing I can tell you. But I can tell you some keys that I used. And hopefully you can use them. Word to DJ Khaled. And maybe you can be successful too. And get yourself your 89 uh, Beast of the Gridiron. So one of the first thing. First key. Definitely you got to invest in most feared players. That's a duh. Right. I mean we all know that. But there's one one player in particular that I definitely need you guys to invest in. You may not have them, all right? Get yourself a Cordero Patterson. Get yourself the gold one. He's going to have 95 speed, all right? And then with the other Kims, it's going to bring his catching and traffic up to 85 and his spec catch up to 91 and his catching up to 86. So definitely a good card. And on top of that, he's 6'2". Because he's going to have Randy Moss-like numbers, right? Randy Moss is in the game now. He got Moss-like numbers. So you're definitely going to need him when you go up against that Pat P, the Jalen Ramseys, the Cam Chancellors, the Brian Erlackers. He's going to be able to shred those guys with his speed, all right? So definitely pick this guy up. Now, the next thing that I need you guys to do is change your personnel depending on what formations you're in. So what I mean by that is this. Say, for instance, you have some glitchy plays out of gun split close, right? Change these offensive linemen to have them only work in gun split close, right? And then if you have some, uh, and also the wide receivers and running backs as well. Now, if you have another formation that you got that's really glitchy for you, make sure that formation has a total different set of wide receivers and running backs and offensive linemen for the most part because what's going to happen and the reason why you need to do that is because there once you reset the game because you're going to have to reset the game if you lose but once you reset and restart the game you're going to keep those presets and that's going to be valued valuable to you because what's going to happen is you're going to be able to switch from different form different um plays i mean different forms in your recent plays and then from those different sets, you're going to have new personnel. So while they still have the same old, you know, most feared beast out there, which is going to be still kicking your butt, you're going to be constantly refreshing your players with new uh, people. So you're going to constantly be able to have fresh players in your lineup. Now, you may ask what's the use in doing that, right? It's kind of cumbersome. Well, the thing about it is those players are going to be fresher, right? So what's going to happen is they're going to make catches where they would have dropped them. They're going to make extra runs where they would have got stuffed. You know, they're going to make a sack where they wouldn't have gotten in. So those are the reasons why you want to change your personnel depending on what formation you use. And that way you can keep them fresh, okay? So that's number two, all right? Now, number three is... With these solos, you're definitely going to have to, like, do your math on them. Like, you're going to have to realize that you don't want to never, you don't want to tie up the game at all. You always want to kind of leave them with one 
So then that way they can just come out on offense and run the ball. And then you can stuff them with run stuff, whatever kind of run stuffing play you use. For me, I use mid blitz and then sometimes even field goal block. That works good too, even in passing because it'll force them to throw the ball away. And then a lot of times if you sack them, you'll end up, you know, going ahead and getting a, either a fumble or they'll throw the ball away. So it's a cool thing, right? But like I say, a lot of these solos, they're kind of easy. I think they get harder. Um with the Khalil Mack solos, right? So Mack the Ripper is really hard. Cursed pieces of eight when you're down by eight is pretty hard, and it's kind of forcing you to go into overtime. Um, that's not slow flake. This one is kind of hard. This one is easy, fee fi fo fum but then, of course, the Revenant. Now, the thing about the Revenant is that once you're up, be careful. Don't leave them with any time because they'll run kickoff return backs for touchdowns. Um, they'll have crazy pass plays where they'll break 15 tackles and run into the end zone. So always be on guard. Even if you're up, make sure you're on guard, especially on kickoff returns, especially when, you know, they need that pass play to get a first down. They will be glitchy. All right. So those are my keys. Hopefully you guys, you can win. And to be honest with you, like I told you, it's all random. It's all random. You know, you got to have fates to come your way, but you got to be able to capitalize on it when you get something good. So that's just how I won. That's how I beat mine. So to recap really quickly, man, go get you a Cordero Patterson. That's number one, right? Get you a Cordero Patterson. Invest in that. And then also, whatever glitchy plays you have on offense, right? Whatever glitchy plays you have and, and whatever formation they are out of, make sure that formation has its own set of offensive linemen and wide receivers and running backs. Not quarterback, but offensive linemen, wide receivers, and, 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 and running backs. That way, the cards can be fresher. You can have fresh players and switch. So you might run some out of gun split close once. Then you might run something out of near once. Then you might run something out of pistol trips once. That way it can be totally different players on the field every time you select a play. And that will keep your players fresher. And it will give you a kind of a little bit of a heads up over them. All right. So that's the best thing I can tell you guys. And like I said, man, uh, Landon Collins, this guy's been balling out for me. I don't know if I'm going to keep him all the way, uh, but he's been doing me really good justice. So definitely, definitely happy that I got this guy on the squad, man. Um, but I want to know what you guys think about it. So hit me down in the comments box. If you have any questions about how to beat these solos, just hit me up right here. I'll try to give you my input. And uh, hopefully you guys can be successful like me. But that's it for this one. I will see you guys on the next one. Until then, it's your partner, Just Mike. Stay up. Much love. And I am out of here.